What's going on everybody? It's Sean Mack at SMC Creations where I'm steady making clothing creations. I wanted to make a video really quick for you guys because I've been having an issue lately with my heat press. The digital timer cuts on but I can't adjust the heat. It doesn't count down and when I close the clamshell, the clamshell magnet won't keep it down. So I did a little research and got a hold of Heat Press Nation and I was able to figure out how to fix it and I just want to give you a little step-by-step -step guide on what you need to do to fix it. So the tools you need for this job is a Phillips head screwdriver, wire cutting tool also with a flat crimp head, you'll need some crimp tops for the wires and you'll need a transformer. The transformer can be purchased at HeatPressNation.com I got it for $35. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They just helped me out to get my problem solved. Also, if you don't have wire cutters, you can use scissors. They work just fine, but you will need at least a flathead uh, pliers or something to be able to crimp. So let's get into it, what you need to do next. So the first thing that you need to do is get your Phillips head screwdriver and you got 10 bolts on the outside you need to move. You have these six here on the back panel and then you have four, two, and two on the side. I'll take them off right now. Once you get all the screws off, just make sure you put them to the side somewhere so you don't lose them along with the back panel. Now you'll see the interior guts of your heat press. Now that you moved all the screws, you can move this around a little bit freely to help maneuver and get inside there. I'm just gonna leave it up for the tutorial. Next thing you wanna do, see all these wires right here? They're wrapped up neatly. You can go ahead and start unraveling that. You can reuse this black piece in a minute. And what you'll find under there is going to be uh, probably two or three zip ties. There's, I had two on mine. I just clipped them off with my scissors. Snip, snip, got them off. Next thing you'll see, is this right here. This here is part of the transformer. The transformer is what helps regulate the power that goes into your circuit panel. If the transformer goes out or starts going out, you're not gonna have adequate power into there and you won't be able to use it properly. So what you're gonna do is come here, disconnect this cord. You can just pull it out, give me a second, bam. Disconnect that. Next thing, you, next thing that you'll find, if you can see, there's gonna be two more screws inside. Like a focus, you'll use a Phillips head for those two. Just go ahead and unscrew those. Be careful, because they both do have nuts on the back of them. Just grab them when they drop in here. You're not gonna lose them. You'll take those two off, and then you'll be able to take off the uh, transformer. I have already done that, but I'm just walking you through what I've did. This is the old transformer. As you can see, there was one and two. Once you take off the transformer, the next thing you're gonna do is, on your new transformer, you're gonna have a yellow wire and a black wire. If you follow the one that's already connected, you'll go in here and notice that you have your black wire and a white wire connected there and you have your red and yellow over here. What you're, all you're gonna do is, just take your hand and you'll be able to pull those off. They're real easy to come off. Once you get your wires pulled off, what you're gonna do is take your scissors or your wire cutter, whichever, and you're gonna snip off these ends because you're gonna end up putting two new crimp tips on both of them when you put your new transformer wires together. So, after you snip them off, take your scissors, Take your new wires and you'll have some plastic on there. Just squeeze it a little bit and then you'll be able to slide off the plastic as such I did. I put the scissors on a little bit, went around it, slipped it right off, exposed some new ones, did the same thing for the yellow. What you'll then do is take your white and black, wrap them together, and then you're gonna take a new tip that you'll need and you're gonna take that and place them inside of here. Once you get them inside and snug, they don't have to be jammed in there, just enough to be into the middle basin. You're gonna take your uh, flathead uh, screwdriver, uh, flathead pliers, excuse me, and then you're just gonna squeeze right there just to make sure you secure both wires in. 
And then you're gonna repeat that step with the red and yellow here on your new one. And you're gonna do the same thing. Once you do that for both, you'll just slide them right back into place. They just slide in really easy, snip, snip. And then they'll be clamped in. And then after that, you're pretty much done. And then you can come back, make sure you tuck everything in, take your connector, put it right back together, which I'll do right now. It just pops right back in place. There we go. And it's connected. Tuck everything back in, get rid of the old one, which would be this. And if you still have that black uh, wrap, just wrap it back around, try to make it look neat, and then go ahead and start screwing all your screws back in. And once you get everything screwed in and secure, now you can just turn it around, plug it into the wall, and turn it on and see what you got. And once you have your heat press turned around, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we got. Look at that. Temp's going up. Dash isn't going dim. Let's check the buttons. Look, I can change that. Change it. Of course, I'm Fahrenheit. I can change my temp. I can go down. I can go up. I can also do my timer. I can go down. I can go up. We're going to turn it down real quick just to give you an idea. We'll push that. And now let's see if the magnet holds. And bam, look at that, the magnet's holding, the timer's going. Let's see if it pops up automatically like it's supposed to. And voila. We have a perfectly working heat press now. So, look at that, now we have a working heat press and all it cost us was maybe 40 bucks. So, I hope you found this video helpful because it definitely helped me out. And now I can get back to pressing and sublimating. And if you could, hit that like button, subscribe, share the video with somebody who may need help. Because I didn't know, and now I just want to share the knowledge. Anyway, this is Sean Mack of SMC Creations, and I'll get at you next time.